Ah, uh, yes, the fork in the road. Literally. We are staying to the left right here. I-10 continues off to our right, but we're moving over here to I-20 now. That's right, this is the way to Dallas. Here we go. Good morning, everyone. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope y'all are doing well on this beautiful, once again, sunny, warm day in Texas. But I'm loving it. As a, as a matter of fact, once we get parked today, we're taking Black Betty the Harley out for a ride. Thanks for joining me, guys. I will be uploading this video with some connecting internet. Of course, check out the video description below for unlimited high-speed mobile internet. That juicy, juicy high-speed internet, how I upload all my videos. Let's have some fun today. All right, we're in Pecos, Texas, and we're gonna do something a little different today. If I can squeeze by this truck. Heck yeah, this is all right. Although we are right next to a highway, it's not that loud on the other side of the camera. And you guys remember in my last video, I reminded all my viewers about Texas rest areas, picnic areas, and roadside tables. You can uh, stay at any of those uh, for 24 hours. However, a few people corrected me. I was a little bit wrong when I said you can't do it if you're in a vehicle passenger. I, I was totally wrong. I'm sorry about that. Any vehicle, uh, a van, a car, you can stay for 24 hours. Uh, the only rules is you can't set up camp. You can't set up a tent or a canopy or a shelter or anything outside of your vehicle, anything. So I, I would say anything also includes a like a barbecue grill. This would not be a good place to bring out a barbecue grill because that would be setting up camp here. Um, and as you saw when we pulled in, this Class A over here has the same idea and they've got a little trailer behind. I wonder if they have a motorcycle in there as well. Yeah, again, we're right next to the, the highway but I can deal with it for one night. They've also got a trash can here. So the premise, the property looks really clean. It's a nice little spot. I like it. I'm going to pop open the compartment to get air down into where my Victron components are there. Fire up the air conditioner and set up Dish Network. Get that all set up for TV. Uh, in the meantime, uh, once I get everything back locked up, we're going to take the bike out and go explore Pecos together. <laughs> there goes my neighbor on his Harley. I talked to him for a little bit. He's from Quebec, uh, but he speaks a little bit of English. Opie, you're the man of the house, but I gotta stop saying take care of your baby sister because your baby sister's a year older than you. So she's gonna take care of you, okay? But you are the man of the house. I got the air conditioner going, blowing ice cold air for the kitties. Let's just check here real quick. Battery's still at 100%. We're pulling 1300 watts for the air conditioner and bringing in almost 1700 watts of solar. So we are good all day on the air conditioner. I just have to do this temporarily so that this Victron compartment doesn't get too hot. I gotta vent it. Nobody's gonna come along and take anything with all these wires and everything. Nobody's gonna touch all that, otherwise you risk being electrocuted. So this will be fine right here. Got Black Betty all cleaned up. I do need to stop and get some fuel real quick. Close this up for the uh, battery tender. That lithium battery is so much nicer. It just starts up perfectly. Oh, and also because I really just wanna test it, <laughs> I put about one gallon of water here inside the solar camp shower. 
So I only need one gallon, and we'll see how this works, if I can mount this up somewhere and uh, make this work for the shower so I can bypass the water heater that's giving me problems. And I appreciate all the tips and info from my last video, the comments, everybody. A lot of people agree with me that it probably is the thermostat on that water heater that's gone out, but it's still usable as long as I turn it off after a certain amount of time. So we're gonna baby the water heater until I replace it or get a new thermostat. In the meantime, let me put on some long pants and grab my leather vest and we'll hit the road. I need to hurry up and get some wind in my face. Quickly. Ah, uh, yeah, it's been a while, Black Betty. It's been a while. Now, I don't know for sure, but any relation to Pecos Bill, I'm gonna have to look into this. I'll probably find out by the end of this video, but if I had a, a picture database of all these postcards that I've gotten from all around the country, I especially like this greetings from Pecos here, I would have a lot of these, wouldn't I? A lot. Actually, I just looked it up because I didn't want to wait. Technically, Pecos Bill is named after the Pecos River and being raised by coyotes near the Pecos River. So I don't, I don't, I don't think he's actually from, I don't think his folklore is from Pecos, Texas. But I know someone who definitely knows the answer to that 100%, and that is the curator of the West of the Pecos Museum, which we're going to visit here later on. First of all, I wanna grab some lunch. Pecos has a lot of these boots all over town, painted up uh, cowboy boots. Very colorfully painted with the boot spurs. And uh, what else? Home of the world's first rodeo? Really? 1883? I didn't know that. Buck Jackson, Pecos rodeo announcer for many years. All right, let's keep riding. I gotta keep that wind in my face, otherwise it's too hot. All right, that's pretty cool. Pecos, Texas is home of the world's first rodeo. This is where it began. More importantly, this arena right here in Pecos. Nothing going on here today. You can see part of the grandstand on the other side of that roof over there, but Buck Jackson Arena here. And we can peek in the gate at least and take a peek here. And nothing going on today though. Is this a sign? Yeah, it is. World's first rodeo held a block south of Pecos Courthouse, July 4th, 1883. Started with claims of cattle outfits, N.A., Lazy Y, and W ranches that each had the fastest steer ropers. Settlers in town for the 4th of July picnic were spectators. The prizes were blue ribbons cut by pocket knife from a new dress of a four-year-old girl in the crowd. That's pretty funny. And this sign was erected 1965. Pretty cool. Let me hop on uh, Google real quick and try to find somewhere to get a bite to eat. And then we're gonna head back to that really cool looking museum over there. All right, this is the best one I could find as far as ratings. Uh, two Javelinas Draft House. Let's go check it out. All right, I got the answer. Uh, a javelina in Mexico is what we have like a wild hog, a wild boar, which is something out of all the animals that we can have up in Sholo in Apache County, hogs pigs, pork, and all that, that's the only one that we can't have there. So, getting started with a little little Lone Star beer here from Texas, and I got a food order in too. All right, no burger this time, guys. They have fried catfish, fish and chips here, and I, I got my barbecue sauce and my fries, and uh, this looks good. Yes, I dip my fish and chips in barbecue sauce, because I'm weird. Oh, that's really good. Really good catfish. Mmm. Cool bar, great food, good music. I think I got a, I think I gained one new subscriber. And uh, we're gonna head over to the museum. Pretty sure Pecos Bill is from Pecos, Texas, so there's that. You know what, I'm, I'm very quickly falling in love with the little town of Pecos, Texas. 
before we go into the museum, I totally missed this. Walk underneath this giant spur here. And uh, although it looks like someone has stolen the information that was right here, I'm guessing, but we have a Pecos Bill monument. And look, it's Pecos Bill wrestling a rattlesnake riding a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> is that one of the old folk tales from Pecos Bill? I can't remember. It's definitely a rattlesnake. I can see the rattler on there. Yep, Pecos Bill is from Pecos, Texas. Very cool. And some more giant cowboy boots with a bunch of really cool paintings and murals on them. All right, let's go check out this museum. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna show you every part of it and we're not gonna make this too long. Just, just see what, see what we can find and see what we like. This museum sits in a very old building here in Texas. All right, well, we're actually gonna start in the other building that we walked past that I liked because this is the original saloon. Whoa, he's talking. Liam, I'd like to tell you about this here saloon, the number 11. Built way back in 1896. Honestly, didn't know there was going to be animatronics in this museum. I, I did not see that coming. I wish you could smell what it smells like in here. How do they preserve like the old wood west smell? That's great. Where's the bullet holes? Oh, there's one. They got little signs on them that say bullet hole right there. And on the floor, on this spot, John Denson was shot and killed by Barney Riggs in 1886. Over by the door, there's another bullet hole. I kind of wish I'd grown up in the old west, late 1800s rather than now. I think I would have had a lot more fun. Uh, the sign says, railroad telegraph collections from railroads. Sorry for what the LED lights are doing in here. It's kind of strange. Some old tools of the trade of the old railroads, early communications, a couple really old, sturdy safes. Now I guess we go upstairs to the bedrooms. Oh, are these the ladies of the night? Hmm, these stairs are really creaky. Wait, let's stand up here for a second, looking down at the saloon. How magical would it be to be in those times when this was a, a happening saloon? Gunshots going off, people getting killed, and... <laughs> oh, man. Pecos Bill, Pecos, Texas. The mystery of the word Pecos. As a proper noun, it denotes a river snaking 926 miles from northern New Mexico to the Rio Grande near Langtree, Texas. Oh, I love these hallways. All that light is coming through from outside. Some kind of a, oh, it's a schoolhouse. It's a school. Whoa, look at this fuse box. Those are old school fuses in there. I wonder if that's still working or if they bypassed that. I hear a train outside. Let's peek. Can we see it? No, but I hear it. Also downstairs, there was another one of these cast iron fireplaces. They're all connected through this brick. This is how they used to heat the building and a Pioneer Kitchen. Oh, now I see the train going out by that window. Everything you need. All the doors. What is the light doing? But I think it has some weird LED lights in this building. That is strange. Here's a bridal suite. Looks a lot better without the LED lights going on. My camera does not like these new lights. <laughs> it's not really doing that in real life. It's just on the video. Ooh. <laughs> Here's a barber shop. There's the chair. That's where you can take a bath. Whoa, is that a, a hair curler? Okay, that is just creepy. Wonder how many people died using that. Dr. Harold Lindley works in here. It's a three-story museum. Okay. Pioneer women's working area. There's a very old wheelchair slash porta potty well, that's convenient i need one of those in the rv heck yeah some state-of-the-art electronics of the era those look like telephone switchboards and typewriters and more telephones the room from the volunteer pecos fire department oh, what is that a fire bucket 
a fire bucket. Back in the days before hoses and water pressure, that's what you used. Oh, we got some old film equipment in here. This is a silent movie projector here. 1922. Wow. And my tiny little iPhone takes better video than that now, by far. A cold drink soda pop ice box used in PBS Depot in the early 1900s. Made out of wood. There's where you open up your soda pop. I guess we can go out on the balcony here. Oh, it sure is warm out here though. Look at this old school winding metal staircase. Reminds me of something you would climb when you're going up like one of those lighthouses or something. There's the main strip of Pecos over there. We can't go up there though. That's cool though. What do we got in here? Oh my Lanta. The gun collection. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's so many of them. Springfield sporting rifle. Uh, that's a sporting rifle. These ones that have the blades on the end for like the Civil War. And on the way out, just like Disney World, they lead you out through a gift store. I'd like to find a magnet. Speak of the devil. They actually have magnets that say Pecos, Texas. I'll pick my favorite. Actually, my favorite one is just like the sign that I post in front of greetings from Pecos, Texas. That's gotta be the one. Cool museum, glad, I've, glad I stopped. And uh, glad I know now that Pecos Bill is from Pecos, Texas. <laughs> she, uh, she'll talk your head off in there if you don't tell her that you gotta be somewhere. I said, I got my kitties back at the rest area. She's like, oh, you get back to your kitties. <laughs> All right, I will. Let's do that. Let's ride on down and get back. Yeah, water might be too hot. Yeah, I might have moved to the shade before I take a shower. All right, it is 4.13 p.m. Let's, oh, it's nice and chilly in here. We're at 99%, but that's not really right. Because look, we're still pulling in 1,700 watts and only asking for 1,400. So we're still unlimited right now. But eventually, as the sun gets lower this evening, this battery will start drawing and these two will swap places. We'll be pulling more than we're bringing in. But by that time, it'll cool off outside and I can just open the doors and windows and turn the AC off, in theory. We'll see. It's a warm day. And on super warm days, I open this flap right here. If I close it, now all the AC is going to all the vents. If I open it, it's just pummeling AC. Ah, oh, it's so nice coming home to that and not running a generator to do it. <laughs> yeah. Opie, did you hold down the fort for dad? Well, thanks, buddy. You wanna go outside and stretch your paws once the sun goes down? We could do that. We could stretch these paws right here. These ones. Can I have the paw? Look at those toe beans. Those are some cute toe beans, buddy. Yeah, buddy. All right. All right, in the shower area, this is my invention using this adjustable bungee. I have strapped it up over the rail here like this so that the shower curtain will still, let me show you. So the shower curtain will still close behind it like that. And I cut the nozzle piece a little bit shorter, although you can see it's still way down there. So you still got to crouch down in the shower to make this work. Uh, I don't know. I, I may have to work on this idea if I, if I want to actually use this, because it's really cool having free hot water from the sun. Maybe some boards up here that go that way with suction cups that hold this actually up because if this were up here, it'd be perfect for me. But for today's experiment, this will work. So I'm gonna take a nice shower. Okay, well, I feel refreshed. Two things, the water was way too freaking hot, way too hot, and I don't know how you, I don't know how you gauge that without, a, without knowing how hot the water's getting in that bag, except if it's too hot, then I guess you could quickly add a little bit of cold water to the bag to bring it down or something like that. And uh, secondly, it's not comfortable taking a shower basically bent all the way down, especially with my, my ribs are doing a lot better, by the way, I haven't talked about that. It's been three and a half weeks since I broke two ribs and uh, I can definitely feel a huge difference. They are, they are healing well and I'm gonna be back to normal here in a couple more weeks. But that, I mean, it'll work in a pinch, but that was not an enjoyable shower. Might be a good way to wash the kitties, kitty baths. 
No? Okay. But we'll put our new magnet up, which I love. Kind of running out of room. Uh, Wayne gave me this really cool little portable uh, magnet board here. And this trip, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely going to fill it up if we've still got nine months to go. <laughs> we'll see. And the other thing is, you know, as summer approaches, that room temperature water, well, it's not going to be room temperature water anymore. It's going to slowly get warmer inside that tank, inside the RV. And on the hotter days, that room temperature water is going to be just fine for a shower. It's going to feel like jumping in a pool showering on you instead of using the propane hot water heater. So repairing or replacing the water heater at this point is not a high priority as we move into the summer now that I've figured out a backup way and everything works. So yeah. Opie, I'm just waiting for the sun to go down so your paws don't burn and then we'll go outside. Okay? I'm gonna do some editing. Alright, it's 5.50 p.m. We're running out of sunlight as it gets lower. Let's check the status here. Battery now down to 87% as we're still asking for about 1400 watts but only bringing in yeah 818 uh, as that sun creeps lower and lower and gets ready to set so at some point here i'm gonna have to turn the air conditioner off and then tomorrow i'll be back to 100 percent probably by noon with the solar coming in and then at some point later in the afternoon again if it's still going to be warm i haven't looked at the weather for the next couple days actually i think it's going to start getting cooler in texas now that's good but anyways I think Opie wants to go outside, so I'm going to find his harness. All right, Opie, you're going to be a picnic dweller? I'm going to let you go wherever you want to go. I'd rather you stay in the shade before the sun goes down, okay? Okay? Yeah, there's a doggy over there. Watch out for the, the dirty dog, okay? All right, you going to hop down? You can do whatever you want, buddy. Go for it. You're such a handsome boy. You're such a big ham. What do you think, buddy? You like being outside? Yeah, I know. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Oh, good jump. Good jump. You can go down another one. I hear Tara crying. She always worries when you're outside. Fresh air, huh? That sun's still pretty hot, though, huh? How hot's that? That's okay. It's warm. It's not hot. Yeah. Just watch out for glass, okay? Oh, really? <sighs> now you really need that bath. You're getting stuff all over you. Look at this. Yeah. <sighs> what a putz. What a putz. That's funny about it is when he's on a leash and he knows that he's on a leash, he'll never run. But as soon as I risk it and take him off leash, leash, he sprints and he'll go, he'll go 50 yards away from me before flopping and it scares me sometimes. You're tangled. Get your foot out. Opie, your, your foot's tangled. A little help here. Your foot. Uh, okay, that works. That works too. Okay. Butts. I love the green lighting in here. It just, it's so me, green, all the time. <laughs> With the TV going, this is great. Meow, Tear Bear. We don't need cat butt, Opie. There's Tara over there hanging out. Let's go outside. Well guys, it's 11.30 p.m. and honestly, it's not as loud as I thought it was gonna be. You gotta remember, a lot of the highways, they die down at night just like everybody else goes to bed. It just quiets down, so it's really not that bad. I don't have any neighbors over here, just the one RV to the other side there. So um, this has been an interesting spot, but uh, it's still not camping. It's still not like remote camping out in nature. So we got to fix that in my next video. We're going to go camping and I'm looking for a body of water in Texas. Okay, guys be well. Opie and Tara and I will see you in a few days. Bye guys.